Morning Carter, this is going to be a quick walkthrough of Groove Agent SE and Groove Agent 4 since we've had a little trouble connecting online uh, recently. Um, I just have an empty uh, Cubase project here and I'm going to add an instrument track. That's the fastest way to do this. Uh, what we were talking about the other day, if you um, were to do it with a MIDI track, I mean, you can get there, but you've got to do all the cross connecting yourself. This way, it, it comes fully ready to use. So, okay, here's Groove. We'll start with SE and then I'll bump it up to four so you can see kind of the difference. Same basic instrument, just more goodies in the in version four, the full version. So, um, this thing breaks down into two sides. You've got the instrument side and then the pattern side. And probably the single most important thing is how to load it so that you get the patterns and the instruments together. And I'm going to the best way to do this is right click on the agent itself and select load kit with patterns. Now, the one thing I will point out, and this we ran into the other day on the phone, is we managed to load a kit that had no patterns in it, and here's why. They uh, they still include all of the stuff that came from the older versions. So all the kits that were there for Groove Agent 1 are still supported, but there aren't any associated patterns. So if you go in here and you load up one of the old kits, there won't be patterns, even though what you requested was load kit with patterns. The trick here is looking at the library column in the in the results pane, and I've obviously stretched this out larger than standard. So when you click on any of these column headings, it sorts by that variable. So if we click on name, now they're in alphabetical. Click on it again, and it flips it. They're reverse alphabetical. So let's go over and click on library name, and it went to null first. Click on it again. And any of the libraries that have the word agent in their name should have patterns associated because the uh, Groove Agent, Agent SE, and uh, Groove Agent 4, uh, the word agent is all that's sort of new with Cubase 8. So if you grab something out of the agent libraries, and you can see here beat agent and acoustic agent options those should load up with uh, the patterns and the, the drums themselves. So if we just take a R&B kit one, I'll just double click that, I think. There we go. Uh, when I look at the instrument side of the, inst the device, you've got all that stuff. Then go to the pattern side and the pads have colors and they have names and they've got an associated trigger note with them. So you can uh, turn that down just a little bit. You can click and hold on the pad to hear the pattern. Let me point out, let me just walk you through the tabs that are here real quick. So we're in the instrument mode. You've got three tabs over here, edit, mixer, and then options. And options is data handling and tool tips and stuff like that. Mixer in Groove Agent SE doesn't have a whole lot for you because you're not you don't have a bunch of kits to balance, but you do have mixer functions in here and you can send, you can create effects and stuff and do all that sort of jazz. Um, realistically though, though, especially the way you're working, I don't think you would want to do that within the instrument. I'm thinking you would do that more out in the Cubase project level, but it's there if you want it. Um, and these are all different sub tabs for mixer stuff. But in the edit mode, notice that you've got these tiny tabs and this is if you really want to get in here and change the sound, you can, you've got all the tools to do it. Um, the version 4, the big version of Groove Agent we'll see in just a minute, has a much easier way to do this. But you, you can come in here and, like if you come to the sample tab, so this, whichever pad's highlighted over here is the one we're working with. There's the kick drum sample. You could, for like down here, there's a command for reverse. You click that and now... That's a really long decay, so let's maybe the snare. Let me reverse it and see. That's too long to be useful, but you could grab the uh, the start time, drag it over like that, and then. So if we go back to the pattern that uses that, there. So now the thing's reversed. Go to instrument, we uh, unreverse it, I guess, and then that's normal. Uh, more importantly, with the patterns, 
Um, the the trick is how. Okay, so we, we've got a bunch of patterns here that we like. Uh, how do we uh, use those? Well, we looked at the other day. You can just click and drag the pattern into the track, right? And then you've got all your notes uh, in a linear fashion. You can double click it. You can go in and you can do all your editing that way, sort of start to finish, which is, I guess, considered a little old school. Um, more and more of these VST instruments are trying to go towards, instead of stringing a whole bunch of notes, they want you to just trigger patterns. But this, you know, you can do this, and then when you come back and hit uh, play in Cubase, it's going to fire all that stuff. There's another way to use this creature, and this, what I'm about to show you, applies to this and the, the big version both. You see each pad has a, uh, a MIDI note assigned in the corner, like um, one of this... A minus one, I don't. Yeah, so if I hit A, A minus one on the MIDI keyboard, that'll trigger it as well. So we can come back to the top. I'm going to hit record in the uh, Cubase project and then just just trigger it. This, this is functioning the same way that uh, Loop Mash does, actually. So there's a couple, all we've actually recorded are those two notes, the, the trigger notes, A minus one, A sharp minus one. There was a little gap in there, and that's that has to do with uh, this, your restart mode, next beat, next measure, or immediately. Um, and that is per pad. So if you want these pads all, if I want this pad to start on the next beat so it comes in cleanly, I can set it to that. But check this out. If you go back to the first one, it's got the other settings. So you, probably would do is grab a bunch of these at once. Come on. That'll do. And change them all to like uh, next measure. And now it should cycle in a little more logical fashion here. Okay, so if you look here, uh, I actually made the switch just after measure five, but it waited and brought in the new pattern cleanly at the start of measure six because of how that restart mode was set. Um, and so now all we're recording is the, the changes and Groove Agent's going to play back the, the appropriate pattern. Uh, advantages and disadvantages to both, but those are the two ways that you can uh, work with it. So um, let's do this. To keep these videos from getting super long, let me wrap this one up and then we'll start again in just a second with uh, Groove Agent 4 and you'll see all the, the goodies you get there. See ya.